Fear is used to control the person who is limited to their emotional state, who can only see the world through the eyes of their emotions. It's a very simplistic view, a simplistic way of going through your day to day, even calibrating your mind. It's a very baseline survival level type of experience. And this works. It has worked on the masses of people for a very long time because we have been kept in that emotional state. We've been kept in the fear of surviving, fear of being embarrassed, fear of not succeeding, fear of being less than something or somebody else. Fear caters to the child mind. And the society has been manipulated to maintain the child mind. But once it's time to control and manipulate more complex beings, fear is not going to work anymore. Fear can control children. It can control child-minded adults. But you need something more complex. You need something that's going to get deeper into the programming of the individual in order to control them. And this is where I'm saying and have been saying that love is that program. Love is is that mechanism. Also because love is the last thing people would think to be weaponized on a mass scale, let alone an individual scale. But on a mass scale, how could they even do that? How could love be a weapon? This is what I want to focus on in this entire video, how love has been weaponized on a mass scale and on an individual scale. The very nature of our reality has been reprogrammed. We did not see the world, nature, culture, each other as we did before Western mindsets took over. Our relationships with the present, the past, and the future, it was completely different. We had a relationship with nature, with each other. The relationships that we carry today are largely surface layer based upon like fear, that emotional state. This is why relationships culture, family, everything is so fragile because there's nothing deep. There's no deeply planted roots to hold on to what's going on. Largely what holds together modern relationships is stuff like sex, sex and survival, desire, vanity, greed, ego, the way we look, the way we're seen. Relationships have become a status symbol. Having children has become a status symbol, a job, status symbol, your car, status. It's all in how you look, how you appear to others. There are no relationships to nature. There are no relationship to your ancestors. There's no relationship to your future generations. These mindsets were embedded in the way indigenous cultures related to this experience, the way they lived their lives our short little lives, we were taking into account our responsibility to what our ancestors went through, what they completed, what they did, and what our descendants will be born into. This is why our indigenous intelligence, our culture, has to be swept under the rug, has to be demonized as primitive, savage. Because if we were privy to all of the information about who and what we are, you would redefine the idea of civilized people, civilization. We love the lies. We take pleasure in our own downfall and stomping on the graves of our ancestors and shitting on the foundation of our future generations. We love it. We've been conditioned to love it. The mainstream mentality is to love that which is destructive, that which you fear. The main focus in our reality is pleasure individualized pleasure at the expense of who and whatever is around us. We take pleasure in knowing that the way things are, are the way they are supposed to be based upon an evolved reality. Exploding out of the Big Bang, molding into a planet, evolving from dinosaurs to monkeys to who we are right now. Priding ourselves as the top of the food chain of reality. We are the peak of experience in this whole universe. We've been conditioned to believe that we are the only intelligent beings. Not only that, we are the highest intelligence in this entire universe. 
shrinking down your universe allows them to place themselves on a pedestal as gods and kings through intelligence, war, force was used before. If you do not listen to us, if you do not follow us, we will destroy you. This will still happen today, but that mechanism is not the biggest weapon. The biggest weapon of today is this idea of intelligence, intelligence that provides you with technology. Our macro is locked up in this idea of intelligence and our micro reality is locked into this idea of love. On a mass scale, we follow the masses of people because of the intelligence that they have told us is the highest of all reality. Most of us, some of us, have access to our basic survival needs. And what keeps us from asking questions, what keeps us from rocking the boat, is how deep we are enveloped in the love program, in the pleasure program, forced into school. Why? We know it's not to teach our children. We understand how it's a part of instilling conformity into the minds of the masses. But that's just one part of it. To what end do we have to conform? So you go to school, you graduate from school. Why? To get a job. Why? To provide yourself with the resources to survive. How? With a family. Why? To reproduce so they can do it again. Is every part of that experience required? No. Somebody, something came up with those ideas. It was an idea to force your kids to go to school. It was an idea to lock your resources into a monetary system. It was an idea to see the universe as empty. It was an idea to see our intelligence as the highest of the high. We are prepped for that transition from survival to pleasure with the subconscious and conscious programming in our media, our music, the cartoons, the movies, in the actual schools, in the minds of the kids around your kids. Sex is another mechanism that keeps people in the state that is equivalent to fear. It's baseline. It's emotion driven. Your primal baseline animalistic expressions of this experience. This is what sex and the way love is used. This is what this is tapping into. This is what this amplifies as our reality. So what I'm saying in this video, keep this in mind. The way people see and talk about fear as a weapon, as a mechanism, see that same mechanism used with pleasure, with sex, with love at its bare bones. At its purest state, sex is only used for reproduction. No amount of poetry, no amount of paint, no amount of romance novels, nothing can change that definition, that observation of what sex really is. Anything beyond that definition is romanticism. We are romanticizing the world. We're romanticizing relationships. And since we have cut our ties to the future generations and our ancestors, we have nothing else to do but to romanticize our experience, to see it as only focused upon us. We place ourselves in the center of the universe and clunk along this timeline, seeming to evolve into a higher state of being, gauged by our technology, gauged by our evolutions of civilization. It's all bullshit. It's all smoke and mirrors. With the movies, with the music, with the cartoons, with their peers, with the programming in the schools, they're putting it into the schools. That gender identity is a thing. Forcing these children to think about sex. Do you like boys or do you like girls? What do they mean when they say like? What are they asking these kids? Attraction. Sexual attraction. Five, six, seven, eight year olds. Why are you having this discussion? Where did they get that authority? Why is this allowed to happen? This is the proof of that power getting out of control. The intention with that is to keep those future generations, those future adults, 
keep them in that primal state of being. Because in that space, they will have nothing else to do but to focus on their survival. You will not question authority. You will not question what these so-called leaders are doing. You will not question what is happening in society. If you're caught up in survival, the primal mind, constantly thinking about sex, pleasure. Sex is a drug. Sex is equivalent to a drug when it is forced upon the people in ways that dig deep into their consciousness, especially without them knowing, especially when it goes into their child mind. These kids' minds aren't even fully developed till they're 25. And you have kids graduating from high school who can't wait to get onto whatever dating app that's out there. They can't wait to get married. They can't wait to have a kid. They can't wait to have sex. They can't wait to go to a club and drink. They can't wait to do all of these things that have been put on a pedestal for adulthood. Why isn't that being questioned? This is a big part of the reason why I have zero problems and in fact push the idea of complete separation from this Western ideology. There is nothing absolutely nothing in these systems that are for the benefit of you as an individual or a mass of people. It is all for control. When you're in that primal state, even the way you raise your children is manipulated. Your children become property as you are property of the government. These parents take out their frustrations with the government on their children. Those children are raised in that situation and then grow up and do it to their children. Love is used in your politics, your love of country, stolen countries, criminal politics. You love your degree. You love your children who have the degrees more than the children who do not. Our minds are consumed with love. Our entire reality has been manipulated, flipped, reversed, and upside down. We have zero love for nature. The idea of this reality, this so-called civilization, as being the top of human evolution is a belief system. It's no different than a religion. When people talk about science over religion, I follow, I trust the science. They think they're talking about math, basic math, elementary science and math, no. That's a simple-minded approach in observing what's really going on here. It's mandatory to love this world the way they present it to us. All that bullshit about them caring about your family, the politicians talking to you about your city, your family, going to war, it's all fucking bullshit. They don't care about your family in the slightest. Nothing more than a cog in a wheel but they're projected out there as if they give a shit about you because of the kindness of their heart. No. And that's how they present themselves. That's how they speak, and people believe it. As people in a church believe the words of a pastor, they only focus on your family, on your children, to appear benevolent. But it's designed to build the family, to structure itself around that system, at the expense of their culture, at the expense of their ancestors, at the expense of the truth that goes against their existence, at the expense of their very existence, to lock in to this false truth that keeps this system afloat. Our natural cycles and relationships with, with each other, with nature, have not only fallen to the wayside, but they have been demonized. And it's gotten to a point to where the people that make up the slaves they don't even have to do anything. They police themselves. The benefactors of these illusions pawned off as truth. They choose every day to look the other way when these criminals build upon their criminal behavior. They condition the masses every day to love them for it. Never forget. Weapons of mass destruction, bombing, genocide, stealing of land, resources, poisoning people, murdering people, slaughter, never forget. Never forget what they want you to focus on. Never speak on what they don't. 
holidays, sporting events, the mind is completely enveloped with sex. Sex, love, and relationships. These systems are loved because of their moon landing, because of how they speak about climate change, because of what they promised for the future, because of what they've done in the past. That's the real love that's out there. The artificial love has taken over because there is nothing natural left in the world. It's like men who are programmed since they are children to see women, sexualize women. The masses are programmed to sexualize the experience and infuse love into the reality as a constant. As a man will look at a woman and see nothing but her physical attributes. We look at this experience and see nothing but survival, fear, artificial love, broken people, broken culture, broken identity. And we love it. We love it even more so because there's nothing else to love. That which we should love has been stricken from the record, has been demonized, has been censored, has been laughed at. We love illusions. We love ghosts of another dimension. People in the New Age community wake up every day confessing their love to other dimensional beings, completely skipping over this reality, jumping off of this realm into an illusion, creating this identity, creating these relationships before they even heal the wounds and the relationships of this experience. They escape. Because the love in those experiences is an organic, it's synthesized love. This is why we need so much of it. We consume ourselves with the vision of the horizon of love. And in our everyday life, we distract ourselves with the mechanism of pleasure. We consume our time. We consume our relationships. We waste everything. Largely because as a whole, we don't know that there's anything more. We only know what we're told to know. The idea of telling you that there's an infinite universe out there ever expanding and we're on a planet hurling through this universe. It's not to make you feel big. It's to make you feel small. It's to make you alone. It's to separate you from those relationships to the sun, the moon, the stars, the realm itself, each other to cause that chaos. So you can provide the cure. You provide the answer. And the answer that's constantly pushed on to these people after it's been conditioned through their whole lives, through their whole childhood, that condition is love. Love on the macro, pleasure on the micro. Love on the macro, pleasure on the micro. Pleasure yourself, pleasure, 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 until you can't pleasure anymore. Then you choose this idea of love. Based upon what? What the movies told you? What the romance novels told you? What your feelings told you? Is it that simple? For some people, love has been shrunken all the way down to sex. Beyond that, just pleasure. Love is not a box of chocolates. It's not a cardboard cutout of a heart. It's not a diamond. It's not a ring. It's not a kiss on the forehead. It's none of that fucking bullshit. Love is a thing just like anything else. If you want to know what love is, take out of the equation what it isn't. See what's left on the table. It isn't what 99.999 forever percent of the people think it is. In my personal opinion, love is nothing more to this experience than attraction is to reproduction. We're sexually attracted to the pleasure of reproducing in order to reproduce. That's all sex is. It's not something that holds your relationship together. All that shit's added. It's a rationale for stuck people. I hear these videos, these talks all the time, talking about how many times a day you should have sex, all this stuff. Everything is based around sex. These are simple-minded people, primal-minded people, survival, emotion-based people. They only go so deep. 
they only go so high. After reproduction, love is to the raising of your children as attractiveness is to reproducing those children. It is natural to our experience to love your children because a lack of love shuts people down, shuts children down. And if they don't have that, they will come to a point to where they won't even want to reproduce. This is where we are at right now. Everything in this world reproduces. But people coming up in this human experience are convincing themselves that that is not even a part of the reality. It's nothing even to look into. Locking ourselves into technology, frivolous relationships, empty, hollowed out people, NPCs. It's a trivial nature. There's nothing to it. Why should you reproduce if you're still a child yourself? It's a depopulation program. Oversexualizing is to depopulate. It's burning out your neurons. After a while, you only care about sex. Sex becomes so much a part of your reality, you don't have a relationship with love, the loving of yourself. And the artificial love consumes so much of our reality that we, not only do we not seek organic love, we don't know that there's an organic love to seek because we've accepted the synthetic love, the artificial reality, as the norm. So they lock themselves into their computer, playing their games. They lock themselves into their jobs, lock themselves into the club, lock themselves into self-pleasure. And at the end of the day, at the end of the generation, there are no strong individuals to fight against this system that created those problems. They're so locked up into the artificial love, they don't even see problems. They love the experience. They love their chains. They love the bars. Funny that our drinking establishments where we consume spirits are called bars because we imprison ourselves in our own illusions. We imprison ourselves in those spirits, those empty spirits, opening us up to more and more emptiness, filling our reality with so much pleasure, sex, desire, that there's no room for anything else. Taking the real experience of love and painting it on everything in the world, everything from a hamburger to somebody you just met on Tinder, is a weapon. It destroys your relationship with your children, with yourself, with your inner child. You don't know how to love yourself. You don't know how to love the inner child. You don't know how to love yourself as an inner child. You won't know how to love your children. So you have parents raising children to survive, empty of love. The only love that's out there, the only love that matters is your love and your relationship with your children. Everything else is romanticism. For love to be love, it has to be interwoven into the very nature of this experience. The only thing that's interwoven into the nature of this experience is reproduction. And if you want love to be as high as it can be, it needs to be connected to the nature of this experience. Watering it down by connecting it to anything else is killing that love. People talking about love in relationships, friends, it's no different than saying that you love your dog or your cat. Hot take? No, that shit's real. You're romanticizing. People romanticize their relationship, their love for their dog. They've romanticized that shit so much, they feel confident enough to speak to people with children as if their dog is equivalent to your child. This is why that kind of love is not love. It's bullshit. The love that exists in your relationship to the, your children is in the code. It's, inter, it's woven into your genetic makeup. You did not make your children, but you are made up with the same codes as your children. 
those codes, that's love. These codes, you do not have those codes with people you just pass on down the street and end up living with in a relationship for the next 30, 40, 50 years. That's a choice. It might feel like love, but it'll never equate to the love that you have for your child. That is natural. There's too much mind involved in any other love than the love that you have with your child. When the mind gets involved, that's when romanticism gets involved. And since we don't have any relationships with our culture, with our future generations, our children, since that has been stricken from the record, severed from our reality, they have severed our connection, our definition of love at its core. This is why this reality focuses so much on sex, love, gender ideology, watering down your culture, your truth with race and invention, constantly separating you from that which is real and installing a new program. We become infatuated with this idea of evolution. We've been placed under an artificial love spell, the love of this Western civilization, the love of who and what we are. This lives alive and well in people who live in that illusion of being American. <laughs> They're the most lost. They're the ones keeping it afloat. They aren't the slightest bit interested in seeking out the truth because the truth exposes the crimes that lead up to their creature comforts. Challenge them as Americans. See what happens. Call them European Americans. See what happens. They tell you where time starts. They tell you where definitions start. They tell you where reality starts. They have that authority. You're not even human, which is what empowered them to have that authority. Dehumanizing you empowers their illusions. Install a love for those illusions. Destroy the organic reality. We're bringing it back to life. And there's nothing they can do about it. It's only a matter of time.